What is going on today? We have a doctor of chiropractic, a expert of mediocre fitness, the one and only man that took down a whole CrossFit competition in Timberlands and no shirt. Uh, today on the podcast, we have a dear friend and someone that it's been a long time coming to, to be on the 8020 podcast, Dr. Andy. How are you doing today, sir? Good, James. Thanks, guys, uh, for having me, Savan. Uh, appreciate it. I'm looking forward to, to speaking with you guys tonight. Cool. We appreciate you uh, making the time for it. Uh, we like to start a little bit left of field. What is the worst item you've ever gotten stuck to the bottom of your shoe? Oh, easy. A nail. Through your foot? No, fortunately, no. I had, I had a uh, not those same Timberlands, but <laughs> a different, a different, a different work boot. So, yeah, yeah, no, just uh, could not get that sucker out. Okay, so um, I guess that 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 instance made you a believer in the Timberland quality. Then, <laughs> oh heck yeah, forever <laughs> a lifetimer. <laughs> okay, love it, love it. And uh, what was your favorite music video in high school? Man, back when MTV was a thing, mm -hmm. man, I got to be honest, I don't know how old I was, yeah. but every time Genie in a Bottle came on, mm. that was, uh, that was, that was pretty remarkable, probably for like a 12, 13 year old boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, remarkable. That's the word for it. <laughs> no shame. <laughs> that's a very respectful way of putting it for sure. <laughs> yeah, Christina uh, Aguilera, she knew how to do it. She did, she did, she did, man. <laughs> it's funny, actually, I'm not sure if y'all ever really heard any of those songs more recently, but it almost sounds like like squirrels talking. Just the pitch in which her and Britney Spears sang. I don't know if it was a stylistic thing in the early 2000s. I was at this CrossFit gym in Tulum, and they were just, they were bumping the hell out of Britney Spears. And I was just listening, I was like, yo, this sounds so different 20 years, you know, in the future. So, uh, I don't know, you know, just hop on Spotify, see if you notice it. <laughs> I'm going to have to now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or go on YouTube, watch the video. Hey, all good. Uh, memories. <laughs> <laughs> so my first question for you, you know, we can just warm up here. What was it that encouraged you to jump into the chiropractic? Because some people may not know this, but it's, it's quite a route. Uh, Y'all actually go more in depth studying in certain areas than, than doctors. There's often more hours associated with getting uh, your license, your certification, everything as a doctor of chiropractic medicine. So what was it that kickstarted that journey for you? Uh, well, long story short, I, I've always had, I guess, an affinity for aesthetics, um, you know, probably more superficial when I was younger. And I was always into, into athletics. <clears throat> and so uh, I kind of never really knew what I wanted to do. Uh, so I did a lot of stuff that I figured out I really hated. And so becoming a coach with CrossFit did that for full time, I think eight years. Um, I went to massage therapy school cause I didn't think I was smart enough to, you know, be a doctor. Um, but I also knew that with all my search that I, that I got in CrossFit, I, I figured I wanted, I could do more to help. I felt kind of limited. Um, so I went to massage therapy school and set a goal to be valedictorian, which I was never that, you know, solid at school. Um, but I set that goal for myself and achieved it. And two of my professors were chiropractors. And when I graduated, they, uh, they mentioned to me each separately, they said, you should think about considering furthering your education. And so, you know, they said chiropractic or physical therapy would be a good route. So I went to physical therapy, didn't go to school, but I applied because uh, I figured there'd be more jobs available once I you know, got my license and got my doctorate. Uh, ended up looking down PT by God's grace, uh, didn't work out. Um, and so out of spite, I kind of just applied to chiropractic <laughs> school and down in uh, at uh, Life University in Marietta, Georgia. And so six weeks after I got accepted, I moved down and and that's kind of where the, the journey started. I, I remember sitting in orientation and uh, soaking it all in, kind of all the philosophy, stuff that I'd never, ever heard before. Um, and I just remember sitting there being like, man, this really jives with me. And so I kind of came in with a blank slate, never grew up with chiropractic. Uh, no one in my family is a chiropractor. 
Um, my brother actually is an MD, so my family's kind of more westernized as far as their thinking in the medical realm. Uh, and so it just kind of, man, I, I honestly, I blinked and I found myself in school first quarter <laughs> of, of uh, chiropractic school. So um, you're right. It's definitely a, uh, an alternative route. Uh, it was, school was tough. I think a lot of people have a misconception of what chiropractors not only do, but like you said, the knowledge, the background that we have, uh, every chiropractor is different. I'll be the first to admit that. And we're all different. Uh, just like every other profession, there's, there's good and bad, you know, it's what you make of it. So, uh, but yeah, ultimately I did a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't, didn't want to end up doing. And, uh, you know, God led me to, God led me to sit, you know, down in orientation down here in, at Life University at Marietta, Georgia. So here we are five years, six years later. Mm. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Do you find that, um, well, actually, let's just go ahead. Let's go ahead and, and knock this whole table over real quick. Why do people think that chiropractors don't know what they're talking about? Why is there a stigma around chiropractic work? Because so, I think that, that me knowing you and me knowing what you know about the little that you've shown me and the time that I've known you about what you know about the body would communicate to me that maybe you know more about the body than even my PCP of the last seven years. I don't know. Why is chiropractic stigmatized? Oh, well, I appreciate that that compliment about, about what I know. I, I test all that to, to smarter people than I that I just learned from. But <clears throat> um, from what I can speak to on as far as stigmatized or stereotyped is, uh, I'll, I'll give you a story. I was back in my hometown of New York, uh, halfway through my first year of chiropractic school. And I was in my CrossFit gym and a few of uh, the members who are a little bit older, they're in their forties or fifties. They're good friends of mine that I, you know, grew up coaching. And this, this, this friend of mine, this, she's a, a wife, her and her husband, you know, she came up and she said, Hey, how's, how's chiropractic school going? And I said, Oh, it's, it's going really well. Um, and she said, you know, how many weekends is that? Mm. And uh, it wasn't, you know, I didn't take it as, you know, a demeaning, <laughs> you know, connotation or anything like that. She just, you know, she purely, you know, had no idea. And so, uh, and I answered her <laughs> and I said about four, four years worth with all the weekdays filled in between, <laughs> um, you know, and she, she was surprised at how long it is, but I, James, I think people look at chiropractic, um, as quackery, if I can use that term, um, you use whatever term you want here. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, I, I hear quackery kind of tossed around a lot because I don't think people truly understand, you know, the, the the knowledge and the schooling that we actually do get, you know, a lot of people think that we just go for a couple of weekends or, you know, a couple of months or even a year or two and just learn how to adjust, you know, or manipulate the spine and adjust subluxation, what we, what we term as subluxation. And so I don't think they truly understand that, you know, take an, a dentist, for instance, they're specialists of the mouth, you know, the oral cavity. Um, but they also, they have to go through, you know, their years of training of learning the entire human body, because they have to learn how everything works together. You know, so if somebody has an infection, why wouldn't it be a great idea for them to have, you know, dental work while they're under, uh, while they're occurring that infection. So I think because as chiropractors, we don't do surgeries. Um, you know, we don't prescribe medications. I think that a lot of people look at us as purely just musculoskeletal doctors, you know, oh my low back hurts. Let me just get adjusted. You know, oh, I have a neck pain or a headache you know, go to a chiropractor and get that taken care of when, you know, truly we look at the body as a whole. So, you know, for instance, I look at someone who has an autoimmune condition and I, I view them as something I, I could at least aid and assist their body in healing that condition. Um, but the general public doesn't, doesn't look at that. And a lot of that can become from the origin of chiropractic and how kind of abrupt on the scene it became and how threatening it was, I think, to the medical community at that time, even now, but certainly back in its infancy, it definitely was a threat uh, to the infrastructure of where people went to get healthcare. 
And when you make this point about it being a threat or seeing somebody with an autoimmune disease and being able to, uh, based on your knowledge and your skill set, assist them in mm -hmm. what it is they may be dealing with. For people who may not be able to grasp it, could you try to communicate why it is that even though you don't prescribe medicine, even though you don't go in and, and, and invade their body, you know, through lacerations or any sort of thing like that, why it is you actually could assist them in their healing based on what it is you do and you know? Yeah, so <clears throat> on, a, on, a, on a basic level, what separates, I think, chiropractors from other professions is we don't look, we don't treat the body. And we don't, we don't, most of us don't pretend to. So we look at it as the body has its own innate ability and intelligence to heal itself. And all we do as, as practitioners, as healers, is we just remove any interference for the body to return itself to health. So in a mechanical way, subluxation, which is a misaligned joint that causes interference of the ner nervous system uh, to communicate between the brain and the body, we will realign joints so that that joint and those nerves, whether they're going to an organ or a tissue or a cell or back up to the brain, have full communication. So somebody with an autoimmune condition, uh, for instance, there's a miscommunication between systems of endocrine, uh, vascular, immune, uh, glandular, and nervous, all, all the systems of the body. Um, and so by adjusting certain segments of their spine, we're interacting with their nervous system on a mechanical level, which on a chemical level will help to restore balance back to their body and their body's ability to heal and regulate itself. Um, now, does that happen overnight? Absolutely not. Could that person potentially always have an autoimmune condition? Yeah, absolutely. Some people are more predisposed to variabilities in their body than others. Um, however, is there, is there an ability for that body to generate health to some capacity with every adjustment they receive? I believe yes. So how long does an adjustment last for? What is an adjustment actually doing? I, I know you're saying move you know, a realignment, but how long do realignments last for normal people? How, how often should people see chiropractors? How often do you want to be seen? And what, what else are you, are you going to provide to client? Because every time I've gone to a chiropractor's office, to be frank, all I've gotten is they open a chart and for five minutes, they read through things, they ask questions that they already have the answers to, they adjust me and then they walk out. Gotcha. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll answer your first question. Um, you know, how long, how long does an adjustment typically last? That vastly depends on the person. I know that's not the answer that, uh, that most people want to hear. They want a concrete yeah, last two days or yeah, last seven years. Um, recently I was at a, uh, I was at a, uh, a seminar where this, this doctor, uh, he created a, uh, a system and I believe it's called Epic, uh, E P I C. Um, and so he only adjusts one bone in the body and that's Atlas, which is the top bone of the neck right below the skull. Um, and we can, we can maybe get into this a little bit, you know, deeper and whatnot, but, uh, you know, that's, that's surrounds a major component of the brainstem, uh, on the spinal cord. And so he only adjusts that one bone and he does it by an instrument that's, uh, hooked up to a machine that is calculated based on x-ray and the alignment of that bone specifically, he adjusts it very specific through sound, sound force. So, and he, he has uh, studies out that show that he's had people go five plus years without getting adjusted again. So now with that, he's obviously had patients come back in to get checked but he's found no misalignment of that specific bone in, you know, in some cases, five years. So uh, I also think it determines where that person, where their health is at currently. So if somebody's coming from a further deficit, then their body has 
developed a pattern to be stable in that quote unquote unstable new homeostasis. And it may take longer for them to get out of that and create a new health, health uh, pattern for themselves. But if you asked how often would I get adjusted or do I get adjusted? So typically I get adjusted once a week for myself. And I usually do pretty well with that. If I get adjusted, you know, twice a week, I think that would probably be optimal for me. I just don't have the, the, uh, I guess, resources to do that twice a week. Um, but and when I see resources, I just mean another doc. Uh, but most people, most people, I would say, if they just get adjusted and make no other lifestyle changes that they are currently going under, I would say an adjustment mechanically usually lasts around 24 to 48 hours. And I forget what other questions you had, James. I apologize. No, 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 no. I asked you a gazillion things <laughs> on top of each other. It's overwhelming. Uh, let's pull on that. 24 to 48 hours. You're telling me that an adjustment is not the fix all. You're telling me that someone with a doctorate can't help me once and then that's it. Is that what you're saying? No, no, not at all. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, that's <laughs> James. You're right. That's what I'm telling you. Yes. A, a once all be all. Uh, would be nice. I would be retired right now if that was the case. And you could charge $25,000 in adjustment and be done and just here we go. Yeah, on the low end. Yes. <laughs> what I will say, though, what I will say though, James is um, on that note. So as a chiropractor and I may get, I may get slack for this. Um, I was having this conversation with a, a good friend of mine uh, actually uh, earlier today is that there's, chiropractic does do amazing things. You know, that's why I finished out, you know, my schooling. That's why I graduated with my doctorate. And that's why I spent so many, <laughs> so much time reading and, and doing, you know, research and work, you know, on my, on myself uh, through school <clears throat> and post is, you know, it, it does great work, but there is, I spend maybe 15 minutes, maybe 25, you know, max with a patient a day. So that leaves them 23 and what, 35 23 hours and 35 minutes, you know, of the rest of their day for them to not screw it up, but just, you know, make choices. Right. And so and when I say adjustments only last maybe 24 to 48 hours, I say last the mechanical aspect of that. So, and the reason I say mechanical is because there's, there's far greater impact on the body that happens just beyond the force of me you know, moving somebody's bone back into place or realigning their, their joint. So that I think is, is longer lasting. Do I have numbers in my head of how far or how long that lasts? I don't. Um, all I can, all I have are just uh, clinical trials, individual clinical trials where I can just have, you know, a patient, a, a patient case where, you know, they, they've been great for months at a time, weeks at a time, you know, other patients I've adjusted once, never saw them again. <laughs> you know, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. Um, but I think typically for most active adults, you know, for you two, you guys are young and healthy. You guys are studs. Um, you know, I would, I would say if you, if you want to optimally utilize your bodies for what they're worth, you know, I would, without having done any diagnostics on either of you or exams or having put my hands on your body to adjust you before, you know, I, I could see you guys having an impact, you know, getting adjusted every week, if not every other week. But again, I think there's, there's a ton of lifestyle choices left on the table. Like I said, 20, we'll, we'll, we'll round up 23 hours of the day that people have to take back their own health in their, in their, in their own way. And, you know, I'm a, I find that I'm a benefit to people with what I do, but I am not a <laughs> one adjustment fix all mindset, kind of a, kind of a, a chiropractor, doctor, or human. Well, that makes a ton of sense. Funnily enough, I actually just for the first time in over a decade, nearly a decade, got an adjustment a couple of days ago. Uh, my partner, she's pregnant and she's been getting uh, some adjustments every few weeks and I went with her and the gentleman I went to see, 
their practice, they also, I can't remember the name of the machine, but they also use something that's similar to like an avatar, if you're familiar okay. with that device. Um, and basically through a combination of adjustments, the mechanical part like you're talking about, and then some of these other tools that they use to try to get a reading on what people might be deficient in from a mineral standpoint, from, from that sort of uh, micronutrient aspect. They were telling me they had one client come in a few years ago who was scheduled to get a heart transplant. And the guy came in, got some work done. They put him on a few supplements. It was maybe two or three things. A couple of weeks went by, dude came in, back in. He had lost 30 pounds from whatever fluid that was kind of pent up in his body. And when he went back to see his uh, cardiologist, he was in amazement and there was no longer a need for him to even get this heart transplant. And so kind of throwing a bunch of questions at you at one time here, but on one end, I'm curious to what extent you might integrate other modalities. You mentioned that you're trained, you're licensed in massage therapy, you're a doctor of chiropractic, but I'm curious what, ev what else you might use in your practice in uh, addition to supplement the mechanical additions or the mechanical uh, help that you're providing for people. And then what is one of the more miraculous recoveries or, or, or healings that you have seen after you've worked with somebody? Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, to answer your question, all the modalities, uh, first of all, I love that story. That's, that's awesome. That's one of those stories that kind of just it, it revitalizes you, you know, after a, uh, after a spell of just, you know, negativity from complaints and whatnot from, from, uh, from patient tell, but, um, yeah, I, I, so personally, I'll answer this, I guess, personally, is I, I incorporate uh, nutrition, um, you know, more, more counseling, you know, I don't have um, any, I guess, quote, unquote, time for meetings with my patients, um, I usually just, you know, have them reach out and contact me. And I usually kind of guide them with any questions that they have you know, nutrition wise, what they could be doing differently, what they could be supplementing to kind of help a lot of it's inflammatory based. Mm -hmm. So, so realizing, you know, what foods are quote unquote an asset versus what foods are, can be a debt um, to your body. So supplement wise uh, at my office, we'd use a, uh, a company called standard process, which I'm not sure if you two are familiar with that company at all. Um, but they're specifically with chiropractors, uh, but they're a whole foods supplement company. They're, they're, uh, up in Wisconsin. And so we use a lot of their, their products and we muscle test. Um, if you guys are familiar with, I think Savan, you've with your wife, that's probably what she's had done. Um, so I use muscle testing to kind of figure out which supplements are, uh, are needed with each patient. Um, if I deem that they kind of need a little extra on top, cause you know, as, as all three of us, I think, can can understand, you know, the food today is not what it was when our grandfathers, mm -hmm. grandmothers, you know, and uh, before <laughs> them were, were eaten. So a lot of people are deficient. Um, so, yeah, I, and I love movement. You guys, uh, you know, I know James follows me on Instagram and, and uh, you know, I've been posting up some kind of more functional movement style stuff because I think that a lot of people, you know, James, you had mentioned you go to, a, you've been to a chiropractor where they just come in you know, read the chart, adjust you, and then, you know, give you a slap on the bottom and walk you out the door. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then you just get right back in your car and you, you know, back to that 23 and a half hour grind. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like to install functional movement back into people's bodies as a way to kind of like retrain their nervous system to uh, hold the adjustment better, but also to, you know, it's just like walking before you crawl, before you run, you know, you gotta, you gotta have progressions. So, um, and then the last question about uh, any miracles. Uh, this one wasn't uh, wasn't so much a miracle, but it was it was touching to my heart just because of the, uh, I guess, enthusiasm and just sheer passion uh, that came from the patient that, that that I was working with. So she came in to see me, I think, a couple months ago, sometime in the late summer. And she'd never been adjusted before older, older lady about to retire. Um, and super, super nice, but she comes in and I'll never forget it. She comes in with this stack of papers that she had, uh, stapled together. And it was this, it was a report of her MRIs, um, uh, her, I think lab tests 
And then her own little printout of her Excel spreadsheet that she made of all her past injuries. And, 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 you know, this is what it felt like on this date, this hurt, it was, you know, ranked a 10 out of a 10, you know, it was sharp, you know, that she did like, it was almost like talking to another doctor who just kind of had all these, uh, these description descriptions of what I would ask in history. And so she came in and she was very skeptical. And, the, and what she said to me, she says, Hey, you know, I don't know if you can help me, but I'm only here because my uh, orthopedic surgeon told me that before I went in for surgery, that I should try a chiropractor out. And so she said, I don't know if you can do anything, but I brought this. And so she handed me this, <laughs> this giant stack of papers. And so, you know, as I was going through her history, <laughs> history with her questions and all that, you know, she was just, she didn't seem very optimistic. Um, and I could kind of tell it was, it was definitely waning on her. The fact that she had been in, in, you know, she was dealing with a ton of low back pain, you know, a few months prior, she had not been able to walk because she was getting, you know, radiating sharp pains down her legs, um, both legs. And, you know, she just, she was looking down the gun barrel of the rest of her life being like, what is, what does my life look like? And so, you know, I walked her through kind of like what we do at my office, um, you know, what my approach was going to be, you know, kind of the game plan going forward and, and, uh, you know, kind of told her a little bit about, Hey, this is, this is chiropractic and here's, you know, I know I, I am going to address your problem. That's, you know, my goal is to get you out of pain. And my second goal is to keep you out of pain. Right. Um, and so that first adjustment went really well. She was, you know, she made all the noises in the world. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that my, uh, my waiting, waiting room was, was kind of making some faces, but, uh, you know, she's not the only one, but yeah, so I adjusted her, everything went great. And, you know, when she got up off the table, you know, I asked her how she was feeling and she gave me this look kind of perplexed and, uh, I was kind of nervous. I was like, Oh no, you know, <laughs> what's going to come out of her mouth. And, uh, she was like, what did you do? And I said, well, what, what do you mean? I adjusted you. And she said, well, yeah, but my pain's gone. And I said, well, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I told you my first goal is to get you out of pain. <laughs> and my, now my second goal is to keep you out of pain. And I, I kind of said that with a smirk on my face, because, you know, I, I, as a chiropractor, we, we can, nobody can ever guarantee anything, you know, chiropractor, MD, you know, PCP. Um, but, you know, you do have some type of an intuition. And so, but I didn't know that she was going to be out of pain that quick. And so when she hopped up and, and, you know, she kind of went over and grabbed her stuff. She's like, wow. She's like, look at that. I can bend over and pick my keys up. And so I said, man, that's awesome. I said, that's, you know, I'm happy for you. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is what chiropractic can do. And so uh, she's like, well, can I come back tomorrow? <laughs> and so I said, well, let's, I said, let's do this. I would love to see you tomorrow, but I'm going to give you an exercise to do. And this is uh, if, if, if you guys are familiar with the Jefferson curl, at all. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's a, okay. It's a, it's a full spinal flexion exercise done very passively. But uh, anyway, so I gave her this exercise. I wanted her to take the next day off uh, and then come see me the ne the following day. So a uh, uh, day in between. And I, I told her that she was probably going to be sore. Like she got hit by a train the next day because a lot of stuff moved and it's kind of like, you know, knocking the rust off <laughs> after the first time. And so her muscles were probably going to be a little bit sore. So um, plenty of water. I told her to try to get a good amount of sleep, you know, get some good organic whole food in her um, and uh, to try that exercise three times a day for the next two days. And so she came back in, I think it was, I think it was Thursday that she came in um, the next time and she walked in and she had like this, this mean face on her, on her look or mean, mean look on her face. And I was like, oh gosh, no, it didn't work. I think I broke her, shoot. And she comes up and she says, doc, I need you to fix me. <laughs> and I said, oh no, you're like, are you, are you in pain? She said, no, but my husband told me I need to clean the house because I'm feeling much better. <laughs> and so, and she's like, I was, I was hoping I was so used to getting out of that work <laughs> that, uh, that now I'm feeling good. He's, uh, he's making me do all these chores. And so I, you know, I, I chuckled and I laughed and I said, well, I, I said, listen, I can, I can leave you a little bit sore, 
no, I'm just kidding. But uh, so she, she's been coming in pretty regularly. So I, I, I took her from three times a week to two times a week. And then, you know, now she's on a, on a maintenance plan uh, for like once every other week, if not once a month. And uh, so Savan, yeah, to answer your question, that was really cool to me because she came in uh, two weeks ago. And after the adjustment, you know, went great. She wasn't in pain. Uh, even when she came in, she turned around and she said, you know, I'm moving to Florida. Um, and she kind of got tears in her eye. And she said, you're going to have to find me a chiropractor down in Florida. She's like, because I now know what chiropractic can do. And she's like, I wouldn't have believed it when I first walked in here. I didn't know what to think after the first adjustment when you're doing it. But you have really changed my life. And you said you have changed my husband's life. Um, and I will be forever grateful. And uh, you could, I could just tell based on what she was telling me that her, it meant more to her than just the pain taken away. It was, she got her grandkids, you know, playing with her grandkids back. You know, she plays pickleball and tennis. You know, she got the ability to do that back, which, you know, was something that she brought up in her, uh, in her first time coming to the office. And so she's looking forward to retirement, whereas before she was, very much so kind of like, well, what do I have to look forward to? Um, and so it was, it was that kind of story that was, you know, she gave me a hug and I even kind of teared up a little bit. It was, it was, it was pretty emotional to be honest. And it was, it was super cool because in school you hear about these stories where people, you know, come in and they're just totally beaten down from life and they live in constant pain and they don't, they don't have any other, you know, they come to us oftentimes as the last resort and not expecting much. And so for her to kind of have that turnaround that quick, it was, it was really cool because I knew what chiropractic could do, but for her to show me her MRI and the report and tell me what her docs have told her about, you're going to be, need to be on medications for the rest of your life. And, you know, your only other option is surgery. Uh, she now has no medications and you know no pain. So that's a, that was pretty hard, hard, heartfelt to me. That was touching. Who do you, can you think of like a concrete reason why more people who are kind of at that extreme don't even give it a shot? Obviously, everybody is different. Uh, and even that story reminds me a lot of my mother because. You know, she she could bring you a stack is just as thick, I, I bet. You know, she's had over a dozen back surgeries. They've gone in, put a electronic device in her on her spine to cut the nerves and, you know, mm -hmm. lupus, arthritis, all these sort of things. And for her, a couple of years ago, um, she got to the point where she couldn't even eat anything without with keeping it down, basically. And that a digestive issue to that extent wasn't something she suffered with up to that point, really. Uh, and so she she called me one day. We were talking and she was just really dead. She committed herself to getting off of all the opiates and all the narcotics. And so the first step that helped with her digestive system was transitioning to a plant based diet. And then she replaced all of that medicine with cannabis. And literally. You know, she, it took a couple of months and then she was back doing Zumba, exercising, being able to go up the flight of stairs. And literally she was walking with a cane 10, 15 years ago. And and I don't even think she's incorporated any chiropractic, you know. So is there anything that stands out to you, either through what people have communicated or just what you see as far as why some people don't, like I said, just give it a shot? Because it's not like it's ten thousand dollars in adjustment. <laughs> No, it's only, it's only 50% of that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think it goes back to, to, you know, James's question earlier uh, about just the, the stigma. You know, I, I think what I was told in school was that we're mortal enemies with physical therapists, you know, we're mortal enemies with MDs, not from a stance that, uh, that we preach that, but I, I think it's because we, in chiropractic's infancy and even I would say teenage years, you know, we're only 130 years old or so. Um, but I, I think a lot of people are ingrained, like even my aunt, you know, 
when she, when my parents told her that I was going to chiropractic school, she said, well, why that's, that's, that's a quack profession. So I think there's still a lot of that in the older generation. Um, you know, my grandmother, my mother's mom uh, was a nurse. And so she was of the same mindset when I uh, decided to go to chiropractic school. So I think, I think some of that's just weeding out generationally. And I don't mean to say that those people need to die off at all. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I'd love to treat them. Um, but I think there's, there's just a little bit of that residual, you know, that there's this mindset of we're just low back doctors and we're just headache doctors. So what can somebody do for somebody who, you know, well, has a, even, even this, even a foot, a knee, a hip, um, you know, or even an elbow, a wrist, a hand, something that's more distal, like an extremity, mm -hmm. you know, chiropractors kind of get this, well, we're just spine doctors. Um, but I think, I think everybody can at least comprehend that, you know, the brain is encased in the skull. Uh, those bones of the skull do in, indeed move, um, albeit very minimally, they do move. Uh, the brain turns into brainstem, which turns into spinal cord, which is encased within the, the, uh, the spine. And then those nerves of the spinal cord leave and exit the spine and go to every tissue cell in the body um, to do various capacities. And if there's a dysfunction within the musculoskeletal system of the spine or even skull, that, that there's going to be uh, interference and I'd say less health that possible uh, with, with misalignment. And so I, I, to no fault of the publics, I think there's just a, cause they didn't go to school, you know, for four years to study, you know, chiropractic, just like I didn't go to you know medical school. Um, to be an MD. So uh, I, I think that as a society, as a culture right now, we're kind of backwards for the most part, as far as what we tend to, where we tend to go to for health first, you know, we, we tend to look at, oh, I have a headache. Let me just pop, you know, an NSAID or an ibuprofen. Um, you know, I have, a, you know, a herniated disc, you know, I, I automatically need surgery. Otherwise I'm going to be in pain and crippled for the rest of my life. Or I have this, you know, you had mentioned, you know, stomach condition where she wasn't able to keep down the food that she was eating. You know, I need to go to an endocrinologist or a gastrologist um, and figure out, you know, if I need surgery or I need to be on medication or I need to have, you know, some organ taken out. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question, Savant, because it's, it's, it's perplexing. I mean, it's a multifaceted uh, answer that, you know, I think some chiropractors do a really great job communicating mm -hmm. and marketing themselves. I think others do a terrible job. And as a profession, I think that we've been trying to wait on someone or a group of people within our own profession to kind of be the ones to spearhead that. Um, and we do have some some people that are out there trying to like make some waves and, and scream from a mountaintop of like, Hey, give us a try first, <laughs> you know, instead of jumping to pharmaceuticals first, you know, give, give a non-invasive, uh, fairly inexpensive, um, you know, treatment trial. Um, but at the same time, I'm also going to preach. I think people, you know, this podcast is 80, 20. I think that's a perfect uh, percentage breakdown of what I believe people actually have the, uh, ability to heal themselves. I think 80%, and I have no logistical <laughs> empirical evidence based on this, um, but purely just my own, you know, lift, lifestyle is I believe that 80% of my health is in my hands. And 20% is stuff that I get from maybe other people and relationships or chiropractic care or, you know, what have you stuff that, you know, by God's grace, he puts in my life. So, <clears throat> sorry, long winded answer. Uh, I, I just think that chiropractors need to look outward to people that are not in chiropractic and try to, to illuminate health to them as opposed to pick on each other and, you know, nibble at each other's differences, you know, cause as a chiropractor, you know, I, I there's two other chiropractors within three miles of my office or the office that I work at. We each, we, we each do something different. 
And even the other chiropractor in my office, you know, him and I, we practice very similarly, but we're, we also do things very differently. And that's, that's the unique and good part about chiropractic. Um, so I think I'll pose this question to you guys. So, cause both of you guys have been to a chiropractor before, uh, James, you had mentioned, you know, maybe a not so great experience that you had. Um, do you guys believe that most people like go to medical doctors, PCPs, primary cares, if they have a bad experience, do they stop going or do they, do they not look for another primary care? Go ahead, James. No, I have, I halfway missed that question. Did you ask if someone has a, a bad situation with their primary care? Do they go to somewhere else? Is that what you asked? Yeah. Do they, do they say that all primary care physicians are bad or, and, and not go to another one? Or do they say, well, I'll just find another one. Cause that one wasn't the right one for me. No, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a very right. simple answer. The answer is that no, they just find someone else because it's ingrained in our culture that a PCP is something that you need. And what I'll add to that, because as you were explaining, I, I really realized I should have posed a better question that I think some people, they have this false idea that people get hurt by chiropractors when, and I haven't sat down and spent hours, but I don't think there's any data or information just showing a laundry list of malpractice claims that can be proven that chiropractors hurt somebody through their work. Even when I got my adjustment the other day, when he initially adjusted it, oh, oh, Lordy, Lord, Lord. I was like, bruh, I hope, man, you might have messed it up. They had to wait for a second. I was like, all right, all right, all right, cool, cool, cool. I was stressing, but it felt like you messed it up for a second. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a, uh, so, so is your question, uh, Savon, do I have, do I have any thoughts as far as can chiropractors hurt someone? No, it was, it was less of a question, more of a comment and a response to your question that I think the people who are skeptical, they have this idea in their heads that people can get hurt when they go to a chiropractor because they're thinking about the, the mechanical nature of it. They might have that idea of the real violent, like the, huh, you know, somebody and that and all of that, that release. And I think that some of those people then become fearful of going to a chiropractor because now they think, oh, well, a chiropractor is so aggressive or so rough because when you go to these other doctors, usually you're just in an office, you get to talk to them for maybe three and a half minutes, you know, and then if you do need something else, either you're getting your drug slipped through a box, you know, in the drive through, or when you do pull up and they're really gonna injure you, they dope you up, knock you out, then they slice you up. Then they stitch you back up. Then they boom. Then the doctor slides, you know, then comes back in and, and you don't see any of the blood and any of what really was violent that just went on, you know, versus the work that you do. So I think that might be part of why some people are still afraid of trying chiropractors. <clears throat> yeah, I think, uh, I think I cut out for the first uh, half of that, of what you were saying, but um <sighs> Uh, the best I can probably give you is what some of, you know, new patients that have never been adjusted before have come in and kind of <clears throat> illuminated to me. Um, so I think a lot of them fear the crack, the noise. Um, and, you know, I try to explain to them all that is, is so that's fluid that's been built up via compression in the joints. Um, basic physics, gas, pressurized, turns to liquid, even more pressurized, turns to solid. So when you, when you create that movement, that motion, uh, and adjust a joint, you're gapping it and you're bringing it into what's called the periophysiological state or space, um, very briefly and very specifically. And so that noise you're hearing is just that, that quick release of pressure and fluid turning into gas real quick. So a lot of them have stated that their fear of that crack is they think their neck is being broken or their ribs are being broken. And <clears throat> um, I think to, to, to just touch on it briefly, um, as far as chiropractors injuring somebody, you know, the, the simple answer is, yeah, that can certainly happen. I just think to the severity, I think is very blown out of proportion. Um, I think what's more important 
for a chiropractor, for me, this is, this is my own thinking for myself um, that I go into my practice with every day is, can this person handle an adjustment? Is an adjustment what this person needs? I think too many times, um, and even myself, you know, as, as, as back when I was a student, I was like, I'm going to adjust everything. I'm a hammer. Everything's a nail. <laughs> so you just, <laughs> that's, just, that's just your thing. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, but you know, patience building that trust is when knowing when not to adjust by far the worst that's going to, that somebody's going to suffer by far most commonly is going to be soreness is going to be soreness. It's going to be usually, it's going to be from adjusting them. They haven't been adjusted ever or in a while or to that, I would say amplitude. And so their muscles respond by contracting very quickly. Um, and so that's why most, most, some patients can come back and say, doc, man, later on that day or the next day I was sore, like I was sore, but I feel great today. Um, you know, and, and I have heard of cases where patients do oftentimes have ribs, uh, get cracked from chiropractic adjustments. Most of the time, those are patients that are osteo. Uh, parodic and they're a little bit older and that should have been something that was you know scanned in the history and that's that's kind of knowing that um when not to adjust or maybe adjust a different way um but i think you know i i, I don't know if you brought this up uh Savon, but i know strokes have been uh have been brought up with chiropractic neck adjustments um the only one that i've ever and i haven't done much digging into this just because I knew if I did, it would just, it would lead down a, a bad rabbit hole. Um, but into, uh, you know, adjustments causing strokes from what, from what I've studied of the neck, it's beautifully made. Um, it's, it's set up so that the body can easily be, I don't want to say reset, but in a sense, mechanically reset, but also restored. And it'll, it'll let you know very quickly um, when something is off. Um, and what I mean by that <clears throat> is the top two bones in your spine, uh, C1 and C2, atlas and axis, the vertebral artery, which is an artery that runs up through. runs up through there and those arteries uh, traverse at a 90 degree angle. And when there's a misalignment specifically of those two bones, um, patients can often experience pretty acute setbacks, headaches. Some patients get migraines. Um, congestion is a big one. Irritability, uh, you know, mood swings of all types. They can even you know, sometimes get dizziness, uh, or autonomic, um, you know, systems, uh, affected such as like your digestive and maybe even your heart and all that, all that comes from the blood flow of those two bones. And so, uh, we're kind of getting off topic. I apologize. This is where, where I go down a rabbit hole. No, this is um, talking about <clears throat> chiropractic. This isn't off topic, <laughs> but, uh, I think there's, there's easy screens <clears throat> to do as an examiner, because that's what we are first is we're an examiner, we're a diagnost diagnostician first before we are an adjusting chiropractor to screen out somebody who cannot tolerate specifically an upper upper cervical adjustment, if not a neck adjustment. Um, so, and I think too many people see on YouTube now, necks getting twisted, <laughs> poltergeist style. <laughs> Um, and they, and they, and they assume that they're going to, you know, be able to see behind them <laughs> after they're done with the adjustment and, and, and I'm not privy to, uh, to too much technology, but you know, there's like sound amplifiers, I guess that some of these chiropractors use to amplify the adjustment noise. Cause, cause I'll guarantee you, I've adjusted ears before you do not hear an ear adjustment standing five plus feet away. You can hardly hear it adjusting the ear, let alone standing five feet away. So, um, I, I think that that's, I think people, 
you know, I can relate it to CrossFit. A lot of people now, because CrossFit's very mainstream. It's on ESPN. It's on you. It's everywhere, you know. And people look at that and they they get a a first glance at it. They're like, "Holy smokes! I could never do that. That's crazy. I don't want to look like that. I could never, you know, perform that 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 feat. Those guys are those guys and girls are crazy." Um, and they kind of look at chiropractic now the same way, whether whether they hear the stories about, "Oh yeah, I got my neck cracked and I could turn." you know, and look over my right shoulder and, you know, turn my head around 360, like an owl. And, you know, Oh my, this chiropractor cracked my back and I heard it all the way up my spine. And, you know, I think people, people tend to <laughs> assume that we are doing more mechanically than what is actually occurring at the final level physically um does that kind of answer the question I, again i apologize for the long-windedness but very thoroughly and there's a rule on this podcast we do not apologize for pulling the threads of things we don't do that <laughs> yeah so that's your last apology you apologize again we're just gonna at 86 you're right on out so <laughs> that's your last one note noted um well I want to pull on something then you mentioned CrossFit. Uh, you mentioned, I mean, I mentioned your, uh, your experience in CrossFit before. Um, do you see chiropractic as something that you're going to do in isolation forever? Or do you see another path for you as it pertains to chiropractic, holistic health, nutrition, fitness, CrossFit? I mean, you have a history in CrossFit and massage therapy to now chiropractic. Where do you see yourself going? And what do you think that other people should what train do you think they should be jumping on as it pertains to providing full value to clients? Myself personally, uh, I, I don't see myself isolating myself in just one modality or avenue um, just because I, I don't live my life like that. So, you know, I, I look at, I see myself doing, whether it be CrossFit or a, or a formula of CrossFit, uh, I, I, I tend to dabble more so in functional bodybuilding now. Um, but I, I see the benefit of, you know, CrossFit in being able to optimize your gifts of training. Um, <clears throat> nutrition wise, I think nutrition is a huge, a huge, huge portion of health uh, that I, I value. And so, yeah, James, I, I see myself trying to, broadcast to as many people as I can ways for them to take care of them, their body. And in, in part ways I can assist them through my, I wouldn't even say expertise, but just the knowledge that I have, uh, that could be valuable to them, um, through chiropractic, through nutrition, through functional fitness, uh, through even massage. And so I, I, I like to lead by example more so than just preach. I think a lot of people preach and then behind the closed doors or behind the camera tend to not fully live up to those standards that they preach for others. And uh, so I, I want to step out and kind of showcase my lifestyle a little bit more so that people can you know, if I can do this stuff, anybody can do this stuff. I am a, I am a single male. I understand that. I don't have kids. I'm not married. Um, but you know, first and foremost, they teach you this on the airplane. You know, you put your mask on first before you, anybody else's, because <laughs> if you, because if you, if you, if you're not conscious, you ain't helping anybody. So you got to take care of number one, so you can take care of, you know, number one, a, um, but <sighs> I tend to, I tend to get exhausted and burnt out by people looking just at me as a one-stop fix all shop, you know, as a, as a bandaid. I, I don't really, you know, I don't think it's out of disrespect by them. I think they're just, they're lost or they've been told differently. And I've just been told that this is, this is how it's going to be for you. You know, I can't tell you how many times in just a week, just this week, it's only Thursday, but just, just this week that people have thrown the term, it's just aging. I'm just getting old. I'm just getting old. Well, you're the same age as your other knee. You know, your back is the same age as the other parts of your spine. So uh, I think that 
I think that people need to be introduced to a whole new platform to which they can stand on and stand up for themselves and take their own health back. I mean, like, like I said before, I think a large percentage of people's ability to attain health, their own health, improve it is in their hands. And if that takes people off my table, you know, then I'm awesome. Great. You know, cause I would rather have an empty office where people that are living healthy outside my, my doors than have my doors be open and flooded with people of just negativity, looking for a simple bandaid and a simple fix. Um, you know, and, and I don't know if that's going to get a lot of criticism <laughs> or not, but that's just, that's just how I think. I think, I think chiropractic is awesome and it works wonders, but it is such a small portion of the pie that, you know, you, can people do without it? I'm going to get slack, sh- slack for this, but can people do without chiropractic? Of course they can do without chiropractic. You know what they, they can do without food as well, but they're going to die. You know, they're not going to die from chiropractic. Um, and, and that's just the, that's just the honest truth. But uh, James, I, no, I don't want to be labeled as a chiropractor, just a chiropractor for the rest of my life. Um, I want to be a part of a, of a larger, larger movement so to speak, that pushes people into a new way to look at health and even fitness. It's, it's ever evolving. And with this whole pandemic, you know, regardless of where, you know, where somebody stands on, uh, on, you know, the vaccines and whether or not COVID is real or it's, it's whatnot, we, we don't have to get into that. I think it's really allowed people to kind of take a step back and, and, reevaluate like holy smokes you know what can i do for myself because can i really trust anybody else and so yeah i think <laughs> scatterbrained i think that people need to be shown that you do not need to rely on others for the rest of their lives and I want to show people how to do that. I feel like that's a mic drop moment right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Appreciate that, Savan. <laughs> so let me let me ask you guys this: if I can, if I can, because I don't I don't usually get to ask. Turn this question. the table. Turn the table if you want. <laughs> we like being on this so side. So your first. <laughs> So, uh, James, when was your first adjustment and what was your your impression going into it? And then after Savan, same question to you, but we'll go James first, I guess. My first adjustment was probably 2019 and it was on the recommendation of my massage therapist. So my massage therapist is the person that introduced me to holistic health, the person that introduced me to a plant-based diet before I even met Savon. Um, I had her back in, in high school when I had really bad shin splints and she was trying to get me to go to chiropractic. I didn't, you know, fast forward to 2019. Um, I was trying to front squat actually. And, uh, I stepped, I locked in, but I stepped back instead of keeping the weight over, like over my midline, I just stepped back and my back, I swear it felt like a rib popped out. So I went and saw her and she was like, you, I can't, like, I can't really help you until you go get an adjustment. Like you, you're going to have to, like, you need to go see Cliff Voss, who's a, a chiropractor over in Peachtree city. And, um, I was like, okay, like, I know you said I need to go to these before, but I don't know about that. Uh, but I trust you. So I will, uh, I will just take it for what it is, I guess. And so I went in there and it was like, I thought it was, she was like, you're not going to be in there that long. He really knows what he's talking about. His patient load is massive. You'll sit in the waiting room with more people than you'll see on your way out. It's all good. He will get you right. Then come back and see me. Literally, you should be able to get in there in the next 30 minutes and come back and then I can work on you. But until that happens, I can't work on you because there's too much going on here. 
Um, and so I went over there and just like she said, literally was there like 15 minutes, spent more time in the waiting room than I did in, uh, in there with him. He adjusted me. I immediately felt better. I was like, Hmm, this might not be voodoo. This might not be quacky. <laughs> went back over there and got massage. And from then on, I got, I got adjusted more frequently. Um, I got adjusted more frequently, but it has been definitely a minute. Yeah, so on my nice. side, <laughs> the first adjustment was, uh, I think, either my junior year or my sophomore year of high school. So that would have either been 2010 or 2011, um, or 2011 or 2012, possibly. Anyhow, I got hit by a car when I was on my way to football practice. And so uh after i was at the hospital they were like yo you know you should probably go see a chiropractor because i was on a bike uh, when i got hit from the side and so i went to the chiropractor and they had me stand on the the little machine that could kind of gauge approximately how much weight is on each side of the body and there was easily you know 15 to 20 pounds or so more on one side of my body than the other and if you looked at me for slick for years you could see a visual slant in my shoulders and so I went to maybe, I can't remember the exact amount of sessions. It was at least three, less than 10 though. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, the force, I didn't realize what the force would feel like. You know, I'd like heard of, of, of adjustments, but I didn't really go into it with any notions either. Um, as a whole, growing up, there was kind of, uh, there was kind of this idea that you go to doctors when you have a problem because my mother spent so much time, literally, there's no exaggeration, she spent more time sick than not for the majority of my life. Um, and that's the same case with other people in my family. So there, I guess as a kid, seeing them go to so many doctors, it was just like this implicit, up to that point in my life, at least this implicit, okay, they're a doctor, they know what they're doing, you know, this is where you go. Um, that was before I kind of had this crazy awakening where I was like, actually, most of everything is bullshit. Uh, before I learned more about some of these other modalities and even food and everything. So, yeah, I mean, it was a positive experience. I didn't feel worse afterwards. I couldn't say for sure that I felt noticeably better personally, but also I was still playing football at that point. So I'm getting, I'm like you said, if, if I could adjustment, you know, 24 to 48 hours, it might keep mechanically and I'm getting run into daily by dudes who are twice my size. So... <laughs> You know, that, 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 that probably interfered a little bit, but that was my experience. Okay. Yeah. That's, um, <laughs> man, Savon, Savon, how was the truck after I uh, hit you? I can only uh, imagine you put, you put a pretty big dent in that cause you're a pretty big guy. <laughs> I wish I could be so proud. I, 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 I did. Yeah, no, no, the car was fine. <laughs> Bike was bit though. <laughs> oh, I bet man. Dang. Well, I'm glad you're here today, man. Yeah, Sheesh. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't going yeah, like 80 it. or anything crazy. It was making a right turn in a busy intersection. So they may be hit 25, 30 miles an hour. Who knows? Bro, that's but we that's, the, that's, that's still moving, my man. Yeah. God's um, grace. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but one thing, if I can, if I can touch on, so there's, you guys both kind of sounded like you had a little bit different experiences with Savannah. It seems like you spent a little bit more time with the chiropractor in that first visit potentially than James, you did. Um, yeah. So my first job in chiropractic was, was at an office out in North Carolina and it was a, what's called a quote unquote, higher volume practice. Um, and what that means for, for, you know, if you guys don't know, or if whoever's listening, doesn't know that's, I was seeing about 90 to hundred patients in a day. Um, um, where's the office I'm at now? Hold on, Andy. We lost you when you said 90, 90, 90 patients a day. And then it cut out. Okay. Are you back? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. So like I said, I was seeing about 90 patients, 90 patients to hundred patients a day, 300 to 350 in a week. Um, and whereas at my office now, I see about 70 to 80 in a week. Um, so in that high volume practice, I was with a patient for about three minutes or less. 
um, they're in the office for a little bit longer uh, doing their warmups and their specific exercises and protocols. But as the doc, I'm only adjusting them and I'm with them for three minutes or less. And so now I'm with a patient 15, 25, uh, sometimes less depends on, you know, who, who's coming in, but, uh, for the most part, you know, five times, if not, you know, seven times, eight times longer, uh, than those three minutes. And so both offices are productive. Both offices get their patients better. Uh, I think a lot of it comes on preference. So the reason why I asked you, you know, what your experiences were is, you know, because, you know, you guys, you guys ever have like a favorite Skittle? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like kind of, you know, you have like, I hated the yellow ones, hated them. Right. But I loved all the other ones. So, you know, somebody goes and has that, you know, yellow Skittle experience at a chiropractor, you know, just go right down the street. There could be a different one, you know, different flavor, perfect for you. So, um, I think, <laughs> I think chiropractors just get that bad rap. Like I asked you guys earlier, where you go to, a, you go to one and, it, and it, they could be bad or they could be good, but they're just not your cup of tea. They're not your Skittle. And so you're like, oh, all chiropractors, you know, are, 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 are bad. This is what you should expect. Um, so it's, it's always interesting to me to get people's experiences that have had chiropractic um, or have not had it. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I think, I think to, to the extent of the office that I was at prior, the high volume practice, I think there could be some things that fall through the, the holes that can be missed by a chiropractor and being that quick, um, you can be, you can be focused. You can certainly be focused. Um, but whenever there's a patient that's acute and has something going on, like Savan, if you came into our office just haven't gotten in, you know, into that accident, you know, you would have, you know, been that little grain of sand in our cog wheel and it would have thrown, <laughs> not that we wouldn't have treated you well. Um, but it would have thrown you know, a big wrench in the, in the, in the fluidity of the office. And I didn't like that experience. And so that was, that was something that I could tell patients that came in that had acute stuff going on. Um, episodic stuff going on. It was frustrating to me to feel like I couldn't give them everything that they required. And I could tell that they also felt not heard. Um, so I'm glad you guys had the experiences you guys did of getting better. Um, and, you know, I think too, James, if I can ask you this question, because I think a lot of people, especially CrossFitters, and just people that are more active, I think they, they get a lot and they tend to jump to a, a far rasher conclusion than what needs to be. So when you had that rib, uh, I'm assuming it's subluxated, um, because it was, if you could describe what that felt like, I don't, you could, I don't know if you could remember, but if you could describe what just, that felt like, it just felt like I slipped a rib on my backside, like under, like it popped through my lat. That's really all it felt like, like it didn't actually, but that's what it felt like. I stepped gotcha. back on too, too heavy of a front squat without being braced. I stepped back instead of staying over midline and stepping back. And so it just felt like I just like, Oh, just like slipped it out. I gotcha. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's, I, I think a lot of people, and I used to get this a lot in CrossFit. I remember I used to get a sharp stab like pain in between my shoulder blades and around into the lat and like underneath the shoulder. And, you know, I would, I couldn't for the life of me figure it out. And like you, I went to a massage therapist, you know, I'd foam rolled lacrosse ball till the cows came home until I was black and <laughs> black and blue, um, you know, and, and did everything stretched, you name it. Um, and then when I finally learned like, oh, this is, this is what a rib subluxation feels like. It feels like somebody's stabbing me in the back and it can sometimes radiate around the side, following the rib, following the muscle, following the nerve. And it, it can hurt when I breathe and it hurts and God knows everything that I do. It's like a paper cut. And it's a simple, simple, I don't want to say fix, but it's a simple, simple adjustment. Um, you know, there's, there's varying ways to do it, but it's, it's, you know, Savan, you mentioned earlier, so many people just skip right over to other modalities that geez, I could, you know, take 30 seconds out of my day <laughs> and put it back in place. And you're, you can walk away 
cheery handed in the in front squatting to your, you know, blue in the face, as opposed to, you know, any other kind of pill or like I said, I used to foam roll <laughs> till the cows came home. And it, it just won't, it won't, it won't fix it. Um yeah. I think it's I think the, I think that chiropractors are up against, you're up against the machine. I think that you're up against modern medicine. I think that you're up against strong opposition that has deep pockets that is funded by not only politicians, but big pharma. Like y'all are up against a formidable force in everything that you do because big pharma makes more money by putting people under anesthesia and cutting them open. They make more money by telling you, you need to go sit in the ED uh, and you need to hang out there for the next four hours. Then you need an MRI, a CAT scan. You need to go on a full, do this, do that. Let's do blood work. Let's just go ahead and run you for a whole STI, STD panel while you're here. We want another $400. You know, like y'all are up against a machine that has deeper pockets than you do. And I think it's, it's unfortunate because I think that there's a holistic approach here. I think that there is movement being medicine. There is food as medicine. There is... Um, there was a lot of things I, I'm not sure. Actually, I know for certain, I don't have the answer. I'm for certain. I don't have the answer. Um, (laughs) so far as I, as I can see it, but it just seems like when someone's like, Oh, well, that guy's a, that guy's a chiropractor. That girl's a chiropractor. Like, ah, they can't be a part of the club. Like we're PTs, we're orthopedic surgeons, we're podiatrists. And then you see also the tribalism from orthodontist and dentist and, you know, to then against people that are double board certified or triple board certified and brain surgery or oncology or what have you. It's, I think it's fascinating. Do you, do you think you, Dr. Andy, are part of the problem or the solution there? I think that I'm a part of the problem when I come at it from a standpoint of it's us against them. And what I mean by that is it, it shouldn't be because, you know, it, as my brother's a radiologist. And so for, for people that may not know what a radiologist is, so he's, he's specially trained to view images, x-rays, MRIs, CTs, PET scans, you name it. Uh, um, and diagnose off of that, off those images. And so, but his training was in medical school. So pharmaceuticals, you know, surgeries, you know, you name it, he doesn't quite uh, grasp, you know, what all that chiropractors do. And so, but yeah, I think, I think that I don't look at it as us against them. I look at it as we're, we kind of flipped. Uh, people go to drugs, people go to surgeries, these irreversible events that sometimes work, you know, other times, you know, don't work at all, if not have adverse effects. And whereas people should potentially look at, like you said, James, a holistic view, you know, I think people should try to look for alternative routes, such as chiropractic, non-invasive physical therapy, I think is awesome. Um, you know, MDs are fantastic. I think there's a purpose. Yeah, of course there's a purpose for them. Antibiotics. I am not, if somebody has an acute infection, say MRSA, methyl resistant staphylococcus aureus, if they have that uh, infection, yeah, you're darn right. I'm going to go send them to the ER to get antibiotics and treatment on that. I, I ain't going to adjust that away, <laughs> you know? So there's, there's a place for it. Um, I just think it's, it's completely flipped in our society. And I don't think that me beating a drum of, of chiropractic is the only thing that works and you know we're holistic and you know vaccines are the devil and pharmaceuticals are the devil and they just want your money and you know you can for sure follow the money and that's you know that's something that i think you know we all had beat into us you know growing up like hey follow the money money doesn't lie um but you know my brother my brother's not a bad guy my brother is a is a very smart intelligent very empathetic doctor and he purely only wants the best for his patients but he, he's looking at it through a lens that's different than mine. And that's neither better nor worse. It's just different. And I think that for a lot of other health professionals out there, whether it be osteopaths, 
orthopedic surgeons, MDs, you know, orthodontists, uh, they, they are just trying to help their patients the best way that they specifically know how. And, you know, that's what's so frustrating to me trying to make a living out of this world is selling chiropractic to patients or people. And <clears throat> I know that in every profession, you got to be some, some part of a sales, you have to have some sales skills. I understand that. However, there's a, the best chiropractors, I, I, I will say this, the best chiropractors to me are not the best adjusters. I think there are really good adjusters that are really great chiropractors, but ultimately the best chiropractors are the ones that have this dogmatic approach where they think when their patient lays down on their table and after their adjustment, whether it be one segment or 24 segments or what have you, whatever they adjust is going to heal that person innately fully. Um, do I believe that the adjustment is powerful? 100%. Absolutely. I wouldn't have gone through what I did to get where I'm at today without believing in that. However, I don't fully believe that in my heart that the adjustment is the only thing that somebody needs for optimal innate health. Um, unfortunately, you know, there's probably going to be less money uh, in that way of thinking because that's not going to, that's not, that's not sexy, right? Like somebody comes into my office and I say, Hey, yeah, I'm going to adjust you and you're going to feel better. And this is what it's going to do for you. But you know, those Doritos that you eat mm -hmm. when you leave here, you know, the 18 or I'm sorry, the 13 hour desk job that you work at home, staring in front of a screen without blue light blockers, you know, munching on, you know, a soda or a Gatorade or what have you. And you're, you know, how many cups of coffee that you have, you know, like I said, that stuff, I can't adjust away. And that's not fun to hear. Somebody would rather just be like, doc, well, doc, just give me a pill right? Just give me a pill so I can keep doing what I'm doing. And if, if I tell patients to get up and, and do an exercise or, or do this movement, like that's on them. You know, that's, that's, that's free advice. You know, they don't pay me for that advice. They pay me for the adjustment. They pay me for my, for my diagnoses and my treatment at the office. I give, I give them free functional movement advice, free nutrition counseling that that's on them. And it does take work. And, you know, that, that's when you go to a doctor, an MD, when you go to an MD's office, uh, I had this back when I was in school, I developed uh, anxiety and depression. I went in and saw a primary care and he looked at my mouth, looked at my eyes, looked up my nose, peeked inside my ears, you know, listen to my heart, listen to my lungs, you know, check my fever, check my blood pressure. And, you know, at the end, he wrote me a script and he said, yeah, you got a case of social anxiety. Just you're stressed. And I said, well, yeah, no shit. I don't know if I can swear on this podcast. <laughs> you say whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but I, 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 I looked at him, I said, yeah, no shit. You know, I'm taking 32 credit hours a quarter in chiropractic school and I'm trying my best to work out and I'm trying my best to eat healthy. And I got no one else, you know, in my corner to help me with that. It's like, yeah, no, <laughs> duh. You know, here's a, can I write you a check for 247, you know, dollars now? Mm. And so versus, you know, he didn't give me anything, any advice on what to do to, to help with that. He just kind of wrote me a script and, you know, James, you'd mentioned, you know, about money. Yeah. There's, there's no money in somebody putting in the work themselves. Pharmaceutical companies aren't going to sit there and say, no, no, don't take our pill. You don't need it. Like they would so much rather have somebody continually eat the way that they do and be pre-diabetic or diabetic and just take this metformin drug because it makes them money. But again, I think that I think that folks that are outside of a holistic mindset of health in the healthcare business, specifically doctors, um, I think that they're just trying their best to help patients the best that they know how. And as a chiropractor, I look at letting the body heal itself first 
without any type of pharmaceutical or surgical intervention. Um, but that's just what, that's just what our society, our culture is kind of ingrained is that no, no, chiropractor, that's the, that's the, that's the, the witch doctor. That's the woo woo doctor. You know, you see them if everything else fails, because we can't, we can't test it in a lab. We can't show it on an image. Um, so we're just going to, we're just going to throw our hands up and say, well, you know, it's, 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 and just basically say, well, we can't, we can't help you. So they either send them to in a circle of other specialists, or they just say, Hey, there's, there's nothing we can do. We can keep trying this drug or, Hey, you know, you can, you can go try. I've had this in some cases where MDs or orthos uh, will send patients my way um, specifically in this case and just say, well, you know, you should go try a chiropractor because we, we can't figure out you know, what it is that's wrong with you. And, you know, in some cases I can't help chiropractic can't help. In other cases, it purely is honestly, it, it's a case of lifestyle, lifestyle, nutrition, the stress that they, that they, that they face every single day with their, whether it be relationships um, and job. Yeah. It's, 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 it's simple stuff once you think of it in the in the in the lens of the body's capable of healing. What are the interferences that are disallowing it to get on that path? Well, this has been phenomenal. Oh my. I uh I think it's so funny. Even in this conversation, like I said, growing up, I never looked at a chiropractor as a quack, you know, but just the reality that so many people, if you're not wearing a, a white coat, you know, if you don't have that MD, they're just la, 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 you're not Fauci. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, um, and I appreciate you being so comfortable and so eloquent and, and grounded in your perspective and what you share, uh, the point that you made about, you know, there are some people and it's not just chiropractors, it's any profession, it's any person who's on a team, quote unquote, thinking that, you know, their way is the only way or the absolute best way and getting in that tribalistic mindset in a detrimental capacity. Um, but I'm, I'm very confident that if somebody had no idea really the depths uh, or the nuance that goes into chiropractic uh, health and, and care, that after hearing your thoughts and, and, and your views, that at a minimum, they're far more informed now than they were prior. And hopefully some of the people who may have been on the fence and never have gotten any work are now more open to that being a possibility if they're looking to have something done to improve their health, uh, ideally in addition to them making those lifestyle changes that they can control. Appreciate that, Savon. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, man. Uh, we will. Uh, we will definitely have to do it again, Doctor. Um, it was a hell of a conversation, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, I look forward to to releasing this and and hearing some feedback from people especially those MDs, DOs, DPTs that are watching and listening that like to come in the DMs. Bring it on, baby. We are here to receive. Um, but again, Andy, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, I know Savon does as well. We, uh, we're just trying to bring interesting conversations from, from people that are willing to share what's on their heart, what, what their mission is, and you know, try to bring some value to, uh, to this society and a and an ever changing ubiquitous assimilation landscape where people are taking in stuff that they shouldn't. Yeah, man. I uh, I just want to say thank you guys to, for bringing me on. First of all, this was uh, you know first podcast. So uh, you guys do. I've been listening to you guys for a little while, and this is yeah, James. You and I have talked about coming on here, so I'm I'm pumped that this is uh, this is finally happening. And uh, yeah, man. For everybody that wants to, you know, <laughs> leave these guys a comment, I'd love to uh, to hear what people have to say, and um, definitely, definitely want to want to help people out, but just also give them my side of the side of the story, my view of chiropractic and and just health overall. But 
yeah, thank you guys for, for having me. I really mean it. This was uh this is a lot of fun. I hope I can do it again. Oh, absolutely. Go ahead, James. No, I was just going to say where, uh, where can the people find you? Um, social media, what can they look forward to, uh, to hearing from you and seeing from you? Can they book with you? Do they need to go to office? Can you come to them? Like, let's get you some people that are interested and uh, let's provide them with the information that they need so they can find you. Yeah, for sure. Um, so <clears throat> uh, first social media, um, my Instagram is Dr. Andy, A-N-D-Y underscore D-C. Um, you can find me on there. Uh, I post up regular just kind of videos about functional, uh, functional movements. And whatnot, um, but also probably be doing some nutritional counseling counseling on there as well in the near coming future. Um, my office that I work at currently is in Johns Creek, Georgia, so uh, the, it's called Quality Life Chiropractic. Um, yeah, you can find us at qualitylifechiropractic.com. You don't need to make an appointment; you can you can drop in. Um, I'll be at appointments uh, scheduled ahead of time are a little bit easier for me to uh, to get you in, but. If you just want to drop in, feel free. Um, I also uh, have my own chiropractic business. It's called Move Well, Lift Well Chiropractic. Currently, that's uh, at OTM Fitness on the Minute Fitness in Marietta, Georgia. And so I practice out of there. And I also do remote. So if patients just want to get a hold of me and uh, you know get adjusted, I can come to them. Um, prices do vary based on... <laughs> on distance. I will, I just want to put that disclaimer out there. Um, and then, yeah, I, I also, I see patients out of that gym OTM, like I said, and, uh, and out of my house. So you guys can, uh, my email is a great way to reach, reach me. Dr. Uh, Andy, A N D Y 1124 at gmail.com. Um, yeah, feel free to email me. Uh, and I set up appointments that way as well. So, um, yeah, those are all good ways to, to get in touch. And if anybody just has any questions, you can always, always reach out and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and ask, ask away. Oh, I'm an open book. Cool. Well, we will make sure to, uh, put your contact information, the information that you made public here today in the description of everything that, uh, that you appear in. So there will be no shortage of, of, uh, capabilities to find you if someone's looking for you. So, uh, we'll put that in there and, and again, appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, it's been a blessing. Yeah, thank you guys again. Appreciate it. <laughs> this was fun. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, for all of you that are that have been here before, you know where to find us. Social. I mean, we're on all the streaming platforms. We're on IG in short form. We're on YouTube in short form and long form. We're on LinkedIn every day, Facebook every day, and actually YouTube every day. So appreciate you, uh, you spending your time. Some of you have posted that 8020 was your top podcast and the Spotify wrapped and save on and I could not be anything, but overwhelmingly grateful for that, um, that you would entrust your time this year to us. Um, and we look forward to, to bringing on more guests like, like Andy, uh, with, with beautifully chaotic stories and, and on the past. So, Thank you again for uh, for everyone coming out and thank you Andy to uh to be in here and we're going to sign off. Peace. Peace.